Welcome to the worship service of the Cashmere Gardens Church of Christ, 4315 Lippenwell Street, Houston, Texas, ministered by Brother Winfred Frazier. It is our pleasure to have you with us on today. Together we will sing praises to God, lift up prayers, read from the Word of God, hear a gospel sermon, have an opportunity to give back to God, and observe the Lord's Supper. Let's now enter into worship. Take us to Acts 23. And this is the verse that these are the verses from which we will get our subject. And then Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. If you don't mind turning there with me, Galatians chapter 6. And we're going to read verses 3, 4, and 5. And from these verses, we will share the subject under which we will study. The Bible says, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, for if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. The subject under which we will study is taken from verse 5. If you're reading another translation, instead of the word bear, there you will see care. And so our subject of study on today is carry your load. Uh -huh. Carry your load. Jesus, the Son of God, <coughs> died for the sins of the world. Yes, sir. He was buried in Joseph's new tomb and rose from the dead on the first day of the week or as we know on our calendar today Sunday his death, his burial his <coughs> resurrection is unprecedented That's right. there has been and there is no such thing as multiple saviors Amen. Amen. no such thing Amen. As back in such and such century, we had a Savior. Something happened to that Savior. Now we have another Savior. There are no multiple Saviors. We only have one Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 24 and verse 34, heaven and earth shall pass away. My word shall not pass away. In other words, uh, Jesus' words endure throughout eternity. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the one and only Savior who affords every person the right to spend eternity. God, because it is Jesus who has provided forgiveness of sin Amen. for all individuals. Yes. Now, due to the fact that man sinned and sins against God, Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, due to the fact that man cannot forgive his own sin, yes, right Romans chapter 2 and verse 5, Due to the fact that sin separates man from God, right. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. 
due to the fact that Jesus is the only provider of forgiveness. That's it. 1 John 2, 1 through 2. Due to the fact that one day this life will be over. Amen. This world will be destroyed, but the soul of man will continue to live. And there is only one of two places. All right. Every one of us can spend eternity. Yes, Due to all of these facts, every person should have joy in their heart. Every person should have peace of mind. Every person should have rejoicing on their lips because through Jesus, every person this morning has an opportunity Amen. to spend eternity with God Amen. in heaven. Amen. Somebody says that heaven uh, uh, is going to be here on earth. I know that that's got to be a better place Amen. than uh, what we are seeing here on earth. And the Bible tells us that the earth as we know it is going to pass away. Right. John says, I, know, I saw a new heaven, right. new earth. Yes, so that lets me know that there is some place God has prepared that is better than what we are seeing yes, right now. Yes, but in order to spend eternity with God, spending eternity with God requires a relationship with God, and that relationship must be through Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said in John 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. You cannot get to the Father without Jesus Christ. That's right. All those who come to God through Jesus are saved from God's wrath. Somebody says that I'm saved, I'm delivered, I'm rescued. Or uh, what are you delivered or rescued from? The Bible says in Romans 5, verse 8 and 9, that we are delivered, we're rescued, we're saved from God's wrath. Amen. When we are saved from God's wrath, God places us in a saved state. And in the same state, God gives us an inheritance in heaven. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, Amen. verse 13 through 14. Amen. Jesus has shed his blood, purchased the church of God, the church of Christ, according to Acts 20 and verse 28. And now Jesus adds all the same to his church, Amen. according to Acts 2 and verse 47. Amen. God wants every person in this world to hear and believe this message that I'm saying. Amen. God wants every person upon hearing and believing this message to repent, to confess Jesus, and be baptized. Yes, Jesus said in Mark 16 and verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. I'm praying this morning that somebody will believe this message. Somebody will make up in their mind that God is right about everything. They will confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and have the courage to allow the Lord to wash away all of their sins in the watery grave of baptism. That's our prayer for today. Now, in a book <clears throat> written by a author named Max Lucado, yeah. entitled In the Eye of the Storm, yeah. there was a story about a parakeet mm -hmm. named Chippy. Amen. Chippy the parakeet never saw it come. Yeah. One second he was peacefully perching in his cage. The next, he was sucked in, washed up, and blown over. The problem began when Chippy's owner decided to clean Chippy's cage with a vacuum cleaner. She put the end of the holes into Chippy's cage to clean the box. But then the phone rang. She turned to answer the phone and barely said hello when she heard Chippy was sucked 
into the vacuum. Burn on the gas, put down the phone, turn off the vacuum, and quickly open the vacuum bag. There was shit. There was sun, but still alive. Since the bird was covered with dust and dirt, his owner raced him to the bathroom, turned on the water, and held Chippy under the running water. Then realizing that Chippy was soaked and shivering, she did what any compassionate bird owner would do. She reached for the hair blow dryer and blasted Chippy with hot air. Poor Chippy never knew what hit him. A few days after the trauma, a reporter who had initially written about the traumatic experience called to see how the bird was recovered. Well, the owner replied, Chippy doesn't sing much anymore. He just sits and stands. And it's not hard to see why. Sucked in, washed up, and blown over. That's enough to steal the song from the stoutest heart. Sucked in, washed up, and blown over. That's about what sums up how many of us feel. Oh, oh. We feel like sucked in, washed up, and blown over when life hits us hard. Amen. You don't have to say amen. amen. It's true. Yes, sir. M. Scott Peck began his book, The Road Less Travel, with a three word sentence that is packed with a, a simple yet profound truth. And it reads Life is difficult. And he is so very right. Life indeed is difficult. We live in a nation, church, where Racial inequality in regards to education, employment, and wealth, building is prevalent. We live in a nation where social injustice continues, even though laws have been made to prevent social injustice. We live in a nation uh, that, in addition to having an upper class and a lower class, we now have an underclass, mm -hmm. underinspired, mm -hmm. underdeveloped. Do you not know that if we don't pay closer attention to our children, they're going to be sucked into right. the right. underclass. Right. Can't get them motivated to yeah. do anything. We can't get them to see the value of developing right. themselves. And so they enter into society out of high school yeah. underinspired yeah. and underdeveloped. Yeah. We live in a nation where the disintegration of the family unit is becoming more and more visible. Yeah. Homes without fathers and mothers together in the home, but rather homes have an alternative lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We live in a nation where the government officials make promises to govern so life can be better for everyone when their goal is really to enrich themselves. Right. We live in a nation where medicine is needed but it is unaffordable. Yeah. We live in a nation where retirement preparation is demanded, but in many cases, the retirement prepared for is not enough to survive on. Yeah. We live in a nation where prices of goods and services increase more than the wages needed to pay for them. We live in a nation where thieves steal your name. They steal your credit. They steal your car. They steal your land. They steal your household goods. They steal the funds out of your bank account right off of their sale phone. We live in a nation where people openly kill other people at school, uh, uh, in, in the streets, and even now at the church. Life is different. Life is difficult. And even though life is difficult, God's intention for the church is that we become a family where we bear one another's burdens. And by so doing, we help each 
each other through this very difficult life we live. Amen. That's why we're looking over at Galatians chapter 6. Yeah. There the apostle Paul says, brethren, if a man is overtaken in a fall or in a trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of, the King James Version says meekness, another translation says gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Let's examine this passage of scripture. We see a command, verse number one, Paul gives instructions concerning our responsibility to help each other All right. when we are stuck and when we are struck. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Sir. See, sometimes we get struck and, uh, you know, we uh, get and overcome more. Sometimes we get struck, and in getting struck, we get stuck. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. So, so, so the Lord wants us to help each other when this happens. He says we are to come alongside of the sinning brother or sister and help. Restore them in a spirit of gentleness. In verse number two, Paul commands that we bear one another's burdens. The fact that the command of verse two follows the command of verse one, this suggests that this is a form of bearing burden. Helping another believer overcome the burden of a certain sinful behavior is one way to help someone bear their burden. But Paul is not implying that this is the only way to help one bear their burden. I want you to remember that because we're going to see something in a moment. But Paul here, when he says burdens, we are to help others carry. It includes any sort of difficulty. Burdens are not just in one category. It can be many categories of things. The reason why I say that is because the Apostle Paul is talking to Christians. And uh, Paul's writings are to Christians. And many times we have said to each other, well, you ought to know better than that. Yeah. Are y'all with me? We are uh, implying that when you become a Christian, there are certain behaviors that should not uh, be experienced, performed, because of what you now know in Christ Jesus. But now, the fact of the matter is that even though we become Christians, we have burdens. Are y'all with me? We have attacks from within and we have attacks from without. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. Sometimes, church, we are our own worst enemy. Yes, are y'all with me? Oh, yeah. There have been times when we've come to worship with an attitude. Come on. Are y'all with me? Oh. We've come with something on our mind. And that something that's on our minds did not originate in worship. We brought it into worship. And we have a bad experience, not because of what's going on in worship, 
But because of what we have brought into, into worship. So, so the burdens that we are to help others carry include any sort of difficulties that individuals face. They are, they are, just because I'm standing here this morning and I'm teaching this lesson does not mean that I don't have difficulties in my life. Are y'all with me? So no, no, I, I didn't steal nobody's car last night. Are y'all with me? I, I don't I don't have a criminal record. But that doesn't mean that I don't have difficulties. Are y'all with me? I, I don't I don't practice using profanity in front of individuals. That's not something that I do. Are y'all with me? But that does not mean that I don't have difficulties. Are y'all with every one of us have difficulties? And Paul says, bear one another's burdens. And he says, so fulfill the law of Christ. Now the word that is used here is generally uh, defined as a heavy weight. It has been normal, normally referred to as uh, carrying a heavy load. Uh -huh. That's why certain animals are referred to as beasts of burden. Uh -huh. Because they can travel under a large amount of weight, a heavy load. Uh -huh. Now, the word that is translated bear in verse 5 is different uh, from uh, the word uh, uh, bird. Bear is uh, carried. It's originally uh, meant to lift something, to carry something. So most literal meanings of this phrase, it means to pick something up Pick something up and carry it. So, um, I don't know if y'all remember years ago, uh, Brother Barclay, I told I was talking to Brother Barclay not long ago, and I told him, I remember, I just remember so vividly his sermon on the 23rd Psalm. And I remember him talking about uh, how that a shepherd, when the uh, when a sheep is uh, heavy with wool and after uh, being out at night, the dew rests upon the wool uh -huh. and uh, that wet wool is heavier yeah. than the dry wool. Right, right. So the shepherd would have to go and pick that sheep up and put him on his feet because he did not have the strength to get up himself under the weight of that boot. Right, right. And uh, that's the term restore. If a brother be overtaken and a thought, oh, ye who are spiritual, restore such a one. You are to pick them up and put them on their feet. So the command, the command implies a continuous. It's written in the uh, in the um, uh, the um, imperative tense, and it carries the idea of a continuous action. So, guess what? Uh, I don't mind telling y'all my age. I'm sixty-three. Uh, I I still need. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Brother Frank, you ought to be able to stand up on your own feet by now. But I still need some picking up. Somebody walked in here this morning, and even though you walked in and your head is up, your spirit may be down, and you need some what? Picking up. Every now and then, we need somebody to pick us up. Can you imagine how many folk who have walked away from the church on a Sunday morning are hurt? Are they hurt more? than they were when they came in. All because somebody 
did not care enough to do what? Pick them up. You got around somebody and everything that came out of their mouth was a complaint. Everything that they talked about was something out there in the street rather than something that's going to lift us up spiritually. And they walked away from the church lower than they were when they came in because we didn't take the time to do what? To pick them up. We ought to bear one another's burden. Even today, today, I know we're having our Black History Program. I know that this is uh, this is a special time, even though it's the Lord's Day. It's a special time for us. But don't take it for granted that folk don't need picking up. You get around the table and you get to eat those greens and cornbread and it's good till you start saying something. Just remember, you're sitting across somebody that might need some picking up. Are y'all with me? Be careful what you say. Be careful how you approach individuals. Your attitude. You're hungry and you want something to eat now. Well, I uh, somebody needs to pick it up. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. And then you walking off. You know what? I'm not going to stay today. Remember, somebody needs to pick it up. You just might be the person to do what? To pick them up. Are y'all with me? So, so, so. So the, 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 the pastor teaches us that we must continually, continually. I've done a whole lot of picking up in my lifetime, but uh, no, 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 you're not through. You're not done. You're not done picking up. Bear one another's burden. Now, now, if you are paying close uh, attention to uh, the text, uh, verse number two says, bear each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Verse number five, on the other hand, says, each one should carry his own load. Yes, now, wait a minute. Mm. In, in, in verse, verse number two, I'm told to bear another, another person's burden. Yeah. But verse number five, he says, each one should carry his own load. Right. So, which is it? Should we bear? another's burden or not. What we can't see in the English language is in fact that the two verses are using two different words for burden. The word in verse number two refers to a very heavy load, more than a person can carry without it. So it's kind of like the, uh, the, the sheep can get up under the weight of that bull. So the shepherd comes and puts him on his feet because he can't get up uh, on his own. Right. Then, and then the, 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 uh, the, the term uh, uh, in verse number five is a different term. Uh, it's a different term. It was used to designate the pack usually carried by a marching soldier. So uh, you, you can visualize in your mind, uh, even today, uh, soldiers carry a bat pack. And although the pack might be heavy, it is not too heavy for a soldier to carry. And every soldier is required to carry their own pack. Are you with me? Every soldier is required to carry their own. Yeah. Now, as followers of Jesus, we must understand that there are certain responsibilities or burdens that each of us must bear, and these burdens or responsibilities cannot be lifted by other individuals. Amen. We have certain responsibilities. We have certain burdens that only we can carry. No one can carry them for us. We must carry our own burden. We must carry our own love. 
Now, y'all stay with me because we're going to start something here. We're not going to finish it today. But this is, you know, next Sunday is going to be the first Sunday in March. And we're, we're getting into the end of the quarter. So from this Sunday on, we're going to be talking about this subject. Even though we're going to have our different core values every week, I'm going to build this, what I'm fixing to tell you, into every lesson. Because it's important for us in order to grow. Right. So, so here it is. Here it is. It is from the understanding of us carrying our own load that we also understand the concept of sowing and reaping. We, we understand sowing and reaping from understanding that we must carry our own load. So I already know that. Yeah, and that's good. If you know that, then you're going to help me, help others. That's right. Okay? Amen. Don't, don't say, well, I, I, know, I know this, uh, so uh, I, I don't have to hear this. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You do. Because you've got to help. See, you're going to see this at the end of the lesson. you got to bear another person's burden. Are y'all with me? Amen. So you need to know this. Amen. Now, before we get into this, let me, let me just share this with you. Christians also have burdens. See, when you become a Christian, there's a misconception that Christians are exempt from burdens. Christians are exempt from having difficulties and troubles in life. And the reason why we went over to Acts chapter 23 is so you can see that this Apostle Paul that's telling us through the power of the Holy Spirit in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 5 to carry our own load is a Christian who had some difficult moments in his life. Are y'all with me? See, we understand better from individuals who have been through some things. You look at me and you say, oh, Brother Faith, you don't know what it's like to be in a certain spot in your life. You, 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 you've been this way, you've been all out. You don't know what it's like, so you don't want to hear nothing what I have to say. Right. When somebody gets up here and they have a testimony of all kinds of things that they've been, you're open right. to hear what they have to say. Right. Even though what they're saying is the same thing I'm saying. Right. You just gravitate to someone who has some experience with you. More so than someone who does not. Are y'all with me? So now, you can listen to Paul now. When he says, carry your own load. You can listen to him in the rest of the text. Because Paul has had some burdens in his life. In Acts uh, chapter 22, Paul is before the Sanhedrin who are Jews but not Christians. Telling them about his conversion to Jesus Christ. Acts 22 and verse 22, Paul says, And they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. In other words, as a result of Paul's testimony regarding his conversion to Christ, which is a message every person must hear, they began to plot against Paul to kill Paul because Paul had decided to follow Jesus because Paul had obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. They had not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. They did not like the message Paul was preaching. They did not agree with it. They decided that they were going to kill Paul. So in Acts 23, and verse number 12, the Bible says, And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Paul was only doing what God had 
had told him to do. Paul has healed folk. Paul has made folks' lives better through the power of the Holy Spirit. And they have made a vow not to eat until they killed Paul. And they were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. And they came to the chief priests and the elders and said, we have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now therefore, ye with the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him. They want to interrogate him some more as they say. And when you're bringing him down, we're going to ambush him and kill him. Uh, this, now notice, Paul's commission was by God to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now we see these people, they are professing uh, to be children, true children of God. And they are planning to kill Paul who is carrying out the very commission that God, they say they're serving, gave him. Can you see the word? Yeah. That's a big message. Oh, yeah. That's a big message. Yeah. And if you can see Paul's burden, then you can see that we have difficulties in life too. Yeah. Paul didn't have any control over what these people were conspiring to do. Yeah. Paul had no control over these people liking him. Yeah. Paul had no control over these people liking the gospel that he preached. Yeah. Paul had no control over uh, the fact that I'm doing what God told me to do, and they don't like it. You know, there are some things we don't have any control over, but they weigh us down. They are burdens to us, even though we have no control over it. Are y'all with me? So we must accept the fact that we have burdens to carry. Now, what do we do? What do we do? No one can carry the burdens for us. So what do we do? Well, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 5 says, we have a load. Yeah. Every one of us carries something. Yeah. Now the question is, what is it that you carry? And let's, let's, let's back up because you got to get this. <laughs> All right, so, so Paul has burdens. He's had difficulties in his life. All right. When we have difficulties in life, mm -hmm. stuff we can't control. All right. All right. Then some things we can't. Right. What do we do? Paul says, you got to carry your own load. Yeah. Going through life, you got people that are brothers and sisters, they have burdens. You have your own burden. You got to carry your own load. Okay, Paul. What does that load consist of? The unit in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 5. Why don't you just go down to verse number 7. Paul says, Whatever a man sold, yes, yes, yes. that he will also reap. Yes. Now, what in the world does that have to do with carrying your own load? <laughs> remember, remember, he's likening the load to a backpack. Yeah. <coughs> now, when you when you got a backpack, you got something. In that right. now, now, Paul suggests through verse 7 that you have something. Why do you know he's suggesting that? He says, Whatever a man sows. And we understand sow means to plant. <laughs> so you have to have something in your possession in order to sow it. Are y'all with me? So I gotta carry my own load. What must my load consist of? It's going to consist of things that I sow. 
Are y'all with me? He says, whatever a man sow. Now the idea of whatever a man sow, it suggests that you're going to sow something. You're not going to go through life and not sow anything. The very thing you do not sow, you still sow. Are you with me? <laughs> so whatever a man sows, but before we get to read, just stay with me on this subject. Whatever a man sows, God has instituted throughout our human experience the concept of sowing and reaping. When a farmer plants seed, the farmer has to acquire seed. When he acquires seed, he cares for those seeds. They will usually sprout and produce growth. In the same way, whatever a person plants in his own thinking, in his own thinking. So Brother Fraser, why are we always talking about the core values of Jesus? Because your values shape how you respond to what's happening to you. You respond to what's happening to you based on the values that are instilled in you. You remember, you remember when, uh, when uh, the Lord told uh, Samson's parents that Samson was going to be born and before he, he can't have any strong drink. He can't cut his hair. All of these things, you're going to grow up teaching him certain things. Because what you teach him is going to shape the way he responds to what's going on around him. You remember when we were coming up? Your parents are always say things. Yeah. What you going to say? Yeah, they taught you. Thank you. Yeah. They taught you how to respond. Mm -hmm. So that when you got out into the world, you would be able to respond in a way that will give you passage in a civilized society. Amen. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Now we said, yeah, now uh, in each other. But some parents don't say yeah and no. Right. Yes and no. Because you've got to know how to talk to people. Call back. So, so, so while the Lord, he teaches us to get plant seeds in the ground and we take care of that plant. We cultivate that plant and it's going to grow and it's going to produce. We also must remember that seeds are planted and even Jesus said it in Luke uh, chapter 8 and verse 11, the seed of the kingdom yeah, is the word of God. So we talk about four values and we talk about tools of things. Mm. Amen, sound doctrine principle. Why are we talking about that? Because when I have a question, yes. when I have a spiritual pain, yes. where do I go? I go to the Bible for an answer. I'm looking for a Bible answer. I'm looking for a Bible minute. I'm looking for a Bible example. I'm looking for somebody that can show me that it has been done. If it has been done, it can be done. Amen. Then I have a new self-invitation. Now I've got an invitation from the Lord to live a better life than what I'm living now. To have a better way of thinking than I have. And we plant that in our mind. I'm going to be brave. I'm, I'm going to stand on what is right based upon what is written in the Word of God, even when it's inconvenient, even when it's unpopular, even when I have to stand alone with the Holy Spirit. I get that planted in my mind because whatever I sow, that's what? That's what I'm going to read. Now, if you remember in Galatians chapter 5, he says, The works of the flesh. Verse, verse number 19, the works of the flesh are manifest to you. Yeah. And he gives a list of all of those works of the flesh, yeah. and we call every one of them sins. Yeah. 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 You, don't, you don't come into this world, uh, you come 
coming to a sinful world, but you don't come into a world knowing how to commit sin. All right. Your children, my children, and even when we were children, we learned how to commit sin. All right. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's nothing in the manual in your car. You buy a car and you get a manual in it. There's nothing in there about hot wire in the car. <laughs> I'm not, I, I have looked through my a manual and I have not found anything about hot wire in my car. Come on. Huh? So where did that come from? Well, the manufacturers don't uh, give that in the manual. Somebody learned it. And they talk. Yes, sir. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. Yeah, when you get your passwords and, and uh, so forth for your bank account and so forth, you enter it into your computer. You don't get no uh you don't get no instructions on how to get another person's password. All right. Now you got your password. Now we're gonna tell you how to hack into another person's account. They don't give you that. But somebody learn how to do that. All right. They learn how to do that. See, we, right. we learn how to do wrong. The work of the flesh. A seed is planted. Right. Seed is planted. When I, when, uh, when, uh, when my kids, I don't know about y'all kids, when my kids started talking, it was daddy, daddy. That was the first word, daddy. There wasn't no cuss word. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I guarantee is not a person in here whose child the first word they spoke was cuss word. That was that was learned language. Come on, preach. Are you with me? Come on, preach. It was learned language. Seed plant. Come on, preach. Works as well. Then then Paul says in Galatians chapter five, verse two two. For the fruit of the spirit, produce of the spirit. The spirit is in you. Uh -huh. Then the fruit of the spirit, and all of the fruits of the spirit are characteristics, attributes of God. Amen. And Paul says, "Against such there is no law." So, so here's the idea. Paul teaches us that when the Holy Spirit is planted in us, just like a seed is planted in us. Then it's going to produce in us the character and the nature of God. Amen. Now, guess what I'm doing? I'm carrying that seed. Yeah. Okay, I've got to carry that myself. Yeah. No one can carry that seed for me. No one can carry the four values of Jesus for me. No one can carry the tools of thinking for me. No one can worship God for me. No one can study God's word for me. No one can pray to God for me. I know y'all said, yes, they can. No, they can't. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And you, listen, I can pray for you. But in order for you to have audience with God, you must go to God. Jesus says, ask. And it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock in the door. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, he's not going to come in until you do what? Open the door. He's the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. You must obey him. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Who must believe? You must believe. Who must be baptized? You must be baptized. No one can do that for you. Remember, remember uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20 says, he says, the uh, souls that sin in each other, Father shall not bear the iniquity of the Son, neither the Son, the Father. We must have a relationship with God in and of ourselves. No one can have that for us. So I'm carrying, listen, I'm carrying my seat. See? See? 
Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. So now, I'm carrying my seed. I'm in Christ. I'm carrying seed. And then I come up on a brother or sister that has a bird. Okay? Now, how am I going to help them bear their bird? Guess what I'm carrying? I'm carrying seeds. Are y'all with me? And if I plant seeds, that's why we make love to us. Good news. Faith. Love. Hope. God's purpose. I'm constantly planting them in my brothers and sisters. I'm giving them love to us. Are y'all with me? Whatever I sow, I'm going to what? I sow that in too. I sow that into the lives of my bear one another's words. How do I bear one another's words? I sow into them. Are y'all with me? Ah, she said, yeah, so, you know, what was the I'm having, uh, I'm, I'm not having a problem going to church. I'm having a problem paying my bills. Okay, well, we're going to sow into yeah. your word. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Amen. See, see now, that, that, that brings, I, I didn't intend to say this, but since we're not going to have Bible class, and uh, we're not having church tonight, so I got to share this with you, okay? All right, so, so, so understand this. I am supposed by command yeah, to bear your yeah, burden. Right. <clears throat> so in other words, I extend myself that's to right. you. That's my responsibility. That's right. But you also have a responsibility uh -huh. to do what? To receive that's what I am extending to you. Amen. <laughs> How do you get that? <coughs> you remember he says, bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Yeah, and remember Jesus says in John 13 and verse 34, he says, the new commandment I give unto you. He says, so fulfill the law of Christ. Jesus says, a new commandment. Do y'all hear that? Yeah. He says, so fulfill the law of Christ. So Jesus says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. So now you've got a burden. Does, does your burden exempt you from loving me as I reach out to you? No. You've got just as much responsibility to see that I'm showing love to you as I do to show love to you. And see, that's what happens in the church sometimes. He so, said, well, I don't nobody care. Well, the question is, are you accepting the caring that's being extended? Because I have seen individuals who will say that the church doesn't care, but when the church reaches out, they don't accept it. So, so I'm supposed to plant seed in you. You're supposed to receive. See, I remember we uh, the uh, the uh, in the church, the friends that needed help, and uh, the church helped me, and uh, they used to say what they needed help me in, and uh, I said, "Well, what's going on?" And I said, "You know, what's, you know, what, what's happening?" And uh, they said, "Well, can y'all help me? Uh, I don't need to tell you what's going on." I'm not exaggerating. This was the conversation I remember. I don't know what was going on. I just need help. Can y'all help? And I said, well, we need to talk about what's going on. Right, right, right. And uh, this is what this is getting. And so, here's a person. This, this is really happening. Really don't, really don't look around and know about the day how to be. So they start coming to church for a while. And it starts circulating. Oh, we don't hear. No, it's not true. Are y'all with me? We're trying to help. Trying to help the best way we can. Mm -hmm. But because we didn't do what they wanted to do, we didn't help. 
See, it's, it's just as much your responsibility to accept our love as it is for us to give. Are you with me? If we, if we, if, if, the, if brothers and sisters are striving to work with you, even though they're not doing exactly what you're doing, what you're asking for, depending on what it is, it's still your, it's, it's still a part of your relationship with God to understand, because you are down, you're burdened, and you can't get up on your own. Are y'all with me? So, so, so I just wanted to share uh, that with you. I've got seeds. I'm carrying seeds. Carry your own load. I'm supposed to carry seeds. What, the, what does my can, what does my load have to do with my brothers and sisters? When I come upon you, I want to be packing something that's going to be able to help you get out from under your burden. Are y'all with me? I, 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 that's a part of me carrying my load is to have something. That's why I worship. That's why I study. That's why I pray. That's why I'm involved in ministry because I want to continue to pack so I can help my brothers and sisters get from under them. Are y'all with me? Come on. No, watch it. Watch it now, brother Larry. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to manage. So that I can help. That him that stole steal no more, yeah. but labor with his hands the things that are good, that he may be able to help those who are in need. I'm not going to get paid and spend everything I got. Are y'all with me? Because I'm packing. Are y'all with me? I'm packing seed. Because I know I've got some brothers and sisters. It's prevalent, it's real. We live in a difficult uh, 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 world. So I've got to continue to pack. You mean, you mean to tell me? You mean to tell me that that, that I I've got to pack uh, uh, seeds and plant them in other people's life? What about me? Jesus said, "Give, and it shall be given unto you." Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. How many of us have ever ran out when we were given the way God told us to? How many of us went hungry, went without? But we were doing what God told us to do. Now, I said, Brother Chris must be gone, and Sister Linda must be gone more than him. Are y'all with me? Man, that was, listen, the Lord has, listen, the Lord has never, 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 never. let us go without in doing what he called us to do. Right here. Right here, right here, at Cash. I remember Brother Joe and Sunday, we met over there in the room. And uh, one brother, I can't remember who said, the brother, we, we need to take up an election for some people who uh, had suffered a loss in the store. We ain't told the church nothing ahead of time. And uh, we came out. And the brothers, uh, the minister took the election, and we, we, uh, we uh, picked up the collection. I remember this Sunday. I don't know if y'all remember, but I remember. And uh, sometimes we, we complain because the collection is not as much as it ought to be. Are y'all with me? Oh, yeah. But that's Sunday. We picked up. Just to help somebody. We picked up almost what we picked up for the regular collection. With no warning. And then that Monday, another member of the church came here and said, I pray that here's a check. Put that on helping the people. Isn't that something? God will never let us go without. Is we doing what he calls us to do. He'll never let us go. We have to believe that. We have to believe that. We have to believe that if we sow into our own lives and in the lives of others, we will help individuals bear burdens. We're going to talk about that. 
for the rest of the year. So, because if we sow, the Lord promised us we're going to do what? Read. Read. Listen, you, you, listen, you live off of promises every day. Every day. Come on. Do you not know that when you put gas in your car, the book says that if you put gas in your car, that car is going to break up. You go to the gas station. I listen. I was at the gas station the uh, day before yesterday, and I didn't see nobody looking down in their tank. <laughs> you hear going down in there? <laughs> How many of y'all have seen that? Come on, preacher. When you put that nozzle into the tank, all you are looking at is them numbers on that. Come on, now. <laughs> That's all you're looking at. When it gets to a certain number, you cut it off. Yeah. And you hang the thing up. Come on, you don't look down in there. You don't stick no stick down in there. Come come on, see you can come out and wear it up. Nothing. You just yeah. hold the thing up. Get in the car. Uh, yeah. Come on, breathe. Yeah. Live off the promise every day. Yeah, that's right. How many of y'all went to the doctor? Uh, come on, man. The doctor said, you take this medicine, mm -hmm. and you're going to feel better. Mm. Man, you got the prescription in your hand. You talk, y'all got feel better already. <laughs> you got the prescription in your hand. It's not even fear. <laughs> you feeling better already? <laughs> Living off a of promise. Come on, preacher. Are y'all with me? Come on, man. Living off a of promise. And God says, if you sow what's a hell of a man sow, that shall he also be. Why can't we believe? What the Lord says. Yeah. yeah, there are so many of us just look around, and I know we're in here and we're dressed up for church and everything, but man, somebody in here is carrying a burden. Yeah. Carrying a burden. Burden of sorrow and grief, burden of sickness and age, burden of emotional difficulties, emotional scars of the past, burden of consequences of lawlessness and sin. And Foolishness, burdens, uh, 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 all kinds of things that weigh us down. Sometimes we just feel like, I've been to church, let me just go home. It's not the church atmosphere, it's the burden. Yes. Trying to find some way, some, somehow I can get off from under these burdens. And that's why we need to be packed. Every day, seeds, core values of Jesus, tools of thinking, words from the word of God, prayers to be prayed. So that we can help individuals get up from under their burden. And when we do this, I already see, when we do this, we fulfill the love of Jesus Christ. Bearing the burdens of others is a genuine expression of love. And how do we do that? We pack up seeds. We pack up seeds. You, 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 you gotta start collecting seeds. Sow seeds in your life. You see, you see I, I remember uh, we had a brother in the church. He, uh, he had a God, had a God, and, and uh, we would have a meeting uh, every uh, Lord's Day before service. And uh, it was supposed to be 15 minutes before worship service, service started. But you got some guys that get to church 30 minutes and we, they get in the room and get to talk. This one brother, he grows kids. He just do all kinds of things. One time, Brother Green, he brought me some corn. Man, that was the best corn. I said, what kind of corn is this? You just boil it and eat it. You didn't put no butter on it. And I don't even know what kind of corn it was. But man, that was a good one. But I was listening to him one Sunday. And he comes in, you know, he talks about old friend. Talks about uh, green beans, peas, and butter beans. Came in and he said, man, y'all, y'all wouldn't believe what I what I've grown now, I've been saving this to tell you. So what, what, what? I've grown some strawberries. 
He will wash it away. It will never be remembered anymore. And he will add you to his church. Acts 2 and verse 47. That church being the church of Christ, Romans 16 and verse number 16. You're a child of God and you haven't been bad, you haven't been carried. And you want to change today. Our repentance, confession, and prayer. If that's your desire. Please come. Let me stand and see. Jesus, my everything loves me. I know. Praise to him I see. today. Please contact us for a Bible answer to a Bible question, a prayer request, a call from the minister, communion supplies, how to give electronically, and our weekly schedule. Until the next time, may God bless you and keep you is our prayer.